Hello, and welcome to a new video log. Um, my internet's been down for the last <laughs> three days, and it's still down now. We've got all our lovely lights flashing, but nothing's coming through. So, hopefully, I can actually get this one uploaded. I'm going to try and upload it using my mobile. I'm not so sure how well this will work, but then we'll see what happens. So, today I was, I was actually thinking of doing um, an alternative process, Liquid Emotion. This is a process which um, a lot of people would have tried um, in the darkroom days, mainly because it was quite easy to do, um, and the, the, you didn't need any sort of sort of extra things. Um, what you would do is you paint the emotion onto the paper, and then you would expose the the paper and have your image. Obviously, you know in Photoshop you can sort of create a sort of liquid emotion effect by painting. Um, uh, using the brush tool and a low opacity and slowly building it up. It does take a lot of time. I've done it this way bef that way before. And there's a bit like, well, okay, but there's a lot of work just to get to that point. So, um, this time what I've actually done is I got a bit of paper. I had some black paint and oh, what I did is I literally just painted it on with, um, I don't know, even a, I'm not really a painter, so I don't really know what type of brush it was. It's quite a wide brush I suppose. But anyway, um and I sort of just painted it on. Really putting loading the <coughs> the brush with paint and then uh putting it on the paper and then using water just to sort of spread it out. So you can get these sort of um lines you can see here. Um I've then scanned this in on my flatbed scanner and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna load this into Photoshop with the picture we're going to put on top, which is the mushroom, and, and the mushroom I've already done the basic work um, to the image in Adobe Camera Raw. As you can see, um, I made a few adjustments here, uh, lo um, trying to lower the highlights, bring more shadow detail in, especially to this area here. Raising the black point because it's quite because it's clipping the blacks. Raising the white point a little bit, just so you actually did some brightness. Uh, mid-tone contrast just here and then in coming into grayscale I use these settings as well uh, I also added a, a post a slight post crop vignette as well and uh, the contrast is very much if you look at it, I just sort of lowered the uh, mid-tones slightly and then just pulled them up. It's really the dark midtones I'm trying to lower, not so much the the highlight midtones, really. And so these are the two um, pieces that you need for the moment. Um, so as I said, there's some black paint brush. Um, I then dumped it on top of the um, my radiator, and it sort of made this crinkly, which I think is quite a nice sort of added effect, you can sort of see these crinkles. Obviously my my scanner is not the cleanest scanner, so it sort of adds a sort of more, even more sort of strangeness to it. I guess it's a random hair. My cat has a love affair with my scanner. Like my cat has a love affair with most of the things I actually own. Um like first thing in the morning it really does have a love affair with my keyboard. So I'm just gonna open both of these now as objects. Um, that's the main thing I'll point out now. I'm opening both as objects and when we get into the next bit, we will see. Ah, change this quickly. Will I just change? That's a good question. Um, it's, it's going to put it in as a uh, basically a grayscale image. Um, I want it to be a color. Why do I want it to be a color? Because this image here is going to be a color as well. Um, this one needs to be quite a big size up a bit because the scanned image and the image of my mushroom are not going to match. 100%. Okay, so here we are opening into Photoshop. Okay, so we have our two images, uh, as you can see. And the first thing we actually can do is work on this one. This is actually going to be the main background image. So I'm actually going to rename this. And this is going to be the Emulsion Background. Now, one thing I just want to do uh, to this is actually get some levels. Clipping it. And what I'm doing is I'm just make, raising the white point so we can get all these sort of, um, I was supposed to say imperfections, but these sort of 
brush marks here. And don't clone it. It doesn't. It won't look as good if you try and clone it. Just um, pull the levels up a little bit, just until it looks the way you want it. You can also play around the midtones, so but we're really looking for that's probably where we want to be. Something like this. Um, and I just put that. That's just got a clipping mask onto there. Okay, next thing we're going to do is input this one in. And then I'll resize it when I give it to them. There we go. And I'm just going to resize it using Control T. I use Shift Alt. You still need to get it big enough, but not too big. Okay, that might just work in here. Okay. And let's going to close this window. Nope. Okay. The next thing we have to do is combine the sort of layers, to levels, layers together. And to do this, we're going to just put the we're going to lighten, and you can see just what happens there. So that's going to set the blending mode to um, lighten, and you can just see what happens there. And actually, if we move this layer around, you can actually see the effect of it even more. So what is black basically becomes invisible. Um, pretty much it. So if there's a white area, so we put it like here, you can't see it anymore. So you go like that and you won't be able to see it. What it means we can actually do is we can't too much um, remake the composition because of the the ground, but we can so we just play around a little bit just to make it look a little bit funky. That's quite nice, but we're losing that bit there. So what you can just easily do is control T, make that a little bit bigger. I like that. I'm going to miss it on the side. Let's have a quick look. Oh, possibly a little bit. Possibly a little bit there. But we've again got this sort of being. It looks like the, the emotions run out, and our lovely mushroom is still there. Which is. That looks quite nice, actually. I quite like that. Now, obviously, we're going to add a slight amount of curve ch uh, curves to just sort of give it a bit of a toning. Um, I'm so sort of just looking at the cur the histogram here. And I'm thinking, well, we could just lower this a little bit higher. This add a little bit more contrast, but it's seeing the contrast for everything as well. And then we're just going to add a little bit of sepia. Now, sepia you can sort of do in several different ways. Really, there's no sort of rule or thumb because everyone has their own way. Of doing it, um, I quite like actually uh, creating um, sepia images using the color balance. Um, I like doing this because you actually have quite a lot of control on creating the sepia tones. So what we're going to do is first of all we're just going to load up the color balance. And so we have we can we can sort of tailor the sepia to match um, the image uh, depending on how strong you want the tones in different places. This is also a good place where you can actually do um, uh, dual toning as well. And so what we'll start with I always sort of start with the shadows. I go shadows backwards, just adding in. Now you can add a little bit of green or a little bit of Right, but you know what you're looking. You know what you know what you're sort of looking for. So we're going to create this um, quite nice, um, rich, dark, uh, yellowish color. So the mid tones, a bit, a bit more in again. But you don't want to overpower it. It needs to be very, quite, you know, it needs to be a little bit quite, a little bit subtle, just to give it a little bit. Little bit of depth. You're not looking for a huge amount, and you can actually see that I'm not moving apart from this first bit. 
but the middle are not moving a lot. I'm literally moving one, three points there, and the highlights. Make them glow. And sometimes you can see the highlights have gone quite um, high again. Okay. That looks quite nice like that. Okay. And the last thing I need to do is human saturation. Uh, is I can then move the hue to whichever way I want to go. Just to get it right. And I can increase saturation or decrease saturation of the effect. Okay, that looks pretty good like that. Um, so what I'm just going to do is quick look at the image. The image doesn't need that much uh, cropping. It's got its own sort of border in, a, in its own way, which I quite like. It's quite balanced. It looks quite balanced on the main edges. And the only problem is it's this empty bit down here. So yeah, that's the final image of a base of, an, of a wet emulsion or a liquid emulsion image. Obviously I've used quite a dark image, my image is quite dark. If you have something slightly more delicate, it would look a little bit different. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just quickly uh, make an image and I'll show you that one in one moment. Okay, and um, this is the uh, sort of lighter version I showed you. Because I said the other one, I said a moment ago that the other one was quite dark, as you can see here. Um, and here with the lighter one, you can actually see the way that the emotion sort of works in a different way. Here it stayed very black, um, which is really quite, you know, sort of nice because the whole part of this image is quite a dark. In a lighter image, it actually goes um, slightly paler. Um, you have to sort of be a little bit uh, careful, is what I would say, is if you don't have the background too light. It needs to be, um, I would say, around about like a 50% gray area. A very sort of like not white, not black, but there's a sort of grey thing for it really to work. Because if you see on this picture, if I just sort of raise this up, you lose that emotion effect at the top of the image and to the side. It sort of burns itself out, but you still got it in the actual leaf itself. But I sort of quite like um, that. So I'm just gonna go back to my history. And just do that there. In this one, I did the human saturation in a, a different way. I just went to, sorry, I did the CPO in a different way. I just went to human saturation, click colorize, brought it down to the sort of, um, this sort of that sort of orangey color, and just raise that up. Obviously, you could then darken that, and then that brings that all down, and it keeps that emotion effect there. The, la the effect is really quite nice. It gives the effect that you have painted the emulsion, which would have had light sensitive crystals in it, um, onto some paper. Now, to really get the effect um, working with the print, when you print the image, um, it's usually best to actually print it on some sort of uh, watercolor paper, some high grade um, uh, watercolor paper, which it will give you that more sort of realistic effect. The reason why is because the emotion would originally been painted onto some sort of uh, watercolor paper. You could add a watercolor texture on top, I suppose, um, if you're just going to keep it as a digital image. But then again, you could just keep it like this as well. I really hope you like the effect. It's a really nice effect just having your toolbox. Um, it's quite nice when you you got a black and white image. Uh, I'm not saying that it's sort of mundane, but it just needs to swing a little bit extra. You want to sh like show a little bit more, I don't know, sophistication in the image. You could sort of add this, just give it an added effect. It's a bit like adding a border, I suppose, um, around the image. It works for both with dark images and light images. I suppose this lighter image probably does look slightly better in a way, but then I do like the way it looks like the emotion sort of ran out um, here on the side of this mushroom. So it's sort of like, you know, give or take whichever one you like the most. Um, hopefully I can get this up today, which is on Tuesday, and share this all with you guys. Um, if I can, it's probably because I have no way to do it. Um, and if not, I will try and get up late, load, upload it later in the week. 
um, once the internet apparently is going to be back up and running. If you want to follow me more, you can do so on my blog, which is aperture64.wordpress.com. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, which is at aperture64. Or you can also follow me on Facebook, which is aperture64 as well. I hope you can pop by the blog and just give me a follow and give me a like. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.